You all, yeah, an hour and 45 minutes. <laughs> I could use some suggestions. So you guys, we would love to know what y'all have been doing in your quarantine downtime. So go ahead and post in the chat. What have y'all been up to? How are you spending your quarantine downtime? Wait, Christy, how do you play Settlers of Catan with just two people? So there is an awesome app for Settlers of Catan, and there are two, so do not be confused. One okay. is the regular Settlers, and the other is Catan Universe. You definitely want Catan Universe. Uh, yeah, so we play Catan Universe, and usually we double up with a couple friends, and it's been crazy. Oh, oh someone said Animal okay. Crossing. That's what I've been on. I, <laughs> okay, so um, I currently have my boyfriend switch because he accidentally left it here before we went full mode quarantine and he hasn't picked it up yet. So uh, he downloaded Animal Crossing and that's all I've been, not all I've been doing, but like a significant amount of time on Animal Crossing. Um, basically, my island is beautiful. It only has three stars, but we'll get, we'll get to a five star. Um, adopting puppies, Amanda. Yeah, Amanda, that's hilarious. <laughs> oh, we got baking bread, working. Yep. Oh my gosh. Um, so Amanda Bam, she adopted like a quarantine puppy. I mean, she'll like keep, she'll like keep the puppies afterward, but like <laughs> literally like right before everything shut down, she went to the shelter and adopted a pup. That is awesome. I'm not gonna lie, you guys. I get so jealous when I'm out on walks and I see people walking by with cute puppies. Yes, yes. I wish I had a puppy right now. Welcome in to everyone who's just joining us. Uh, go ahead and click speaker view on the top right of your screen, just so you know who's talking to you right now. Uh, my name is Janelle and I'm co-hosting with my friend here, Christy. And we right now are asking, what are some people's pastimes uh, during this quarantine? And so far we've gotten puppies, settlers of Catan. I thought it was Catan, not Catan. Mm -hmm. Definitely Catan. Definitely Catan. Definitely Catan. Oh my gosh. Oh, baking GF bread. Is that girlfriend bread or gluten-free bread? <laughs> Bananagrams, classic. I'm driving unreal amounts of food. Hit me up for apple chips. Brian McNair. 2K and chill. Hey, Ethan, you said definitely C-A-T-A-N, but like, I don't, I don't know if that's Catan <laughs> or Catan. Brian loves girlfriend. But I considered asking for that on a date once. Christy, get your man. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. This is hilarious. You guys are right. Who who are you uh, quarantined with right now? Uh, so I am quarantined with my wonderful husband, Grant. Um, but it's so funny, you guys, one of my favorite questions to ask people during the quarantine has been if you could be quarantined with anybody for a month, who would you choose? And I've heard the funniest answers. Um, mine personally would be the Obamas, because think about it. It would be awesome to be quarantined with them for a month. It would be so cool. But okay, so something that I've been doing is asking a lot of would you rather questions. And I would love to have you guys answer some of these. So would you would you rather be seen with Michelle Obama or Barack Obama? Go ahead and post it in the chat. I'm super curious to see what y'all would say. I think you know I about to Okay. Okay. Uh, there, I agree. It's super hard. I think I would have to go with Michelle, too. Do not resist. Michelle? No, what about you? Who'd you go with? Um, I think I'd 
have to be Michelle. I think she is a boss lady, and I've really appreciated her and the way that she like just talks about life, talks about people. Um, great lady, great lady, I would say. Um, I have a question. Would you rather be? Shout out to everyone who's watched Tiger King. Or, if you haven't watched Tiger King, have probably seen the memes and the videos on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all those things. Would you rather be quarantined with Carol Baskin or Joe Exotic? I haven't watched TikTok or TikTok. I haven't watched Tiger King or TikTok, uh, but gosh, I feel like it'd be a crazy to be quarantined with Joe Exotic. I would have a less chance of being shot if I was with Carol, but I mean, like, if you were with Carol, you might be fed to the target, the tigers. Wait, do you guys remember the savage dance? Like, the one Trevor did? Shout out Trevor, Trevor Yorman. Uh, have you guys seen the Tiger King version? Basket. Killed her husband, whacked him. Uh, over deadline, it didn't happen. <laughs> so, uh, Carol Baskin. <laughs> no, uh, that's awesome. Carol Baskin. <laughs> More chance of being fed to tires. Votes for Carol and Joe were a house divided. Oh my gosh, the 5 0. <sighs> Shout out 5 0. Great house. Some people would say t the tiger is instead. <laughs> Welcome in, everyone. Uh, you might notice that you are muted. That's okay. That is normal. Um, what I would suggest uh, in at the top, you see a button that is um, speaker view. I would highly suggest putting on that button just so that you can see who's speaking to you. Um, my name is Janelle, and I am an intern at the Inn, and I'm really, really excited to see your faces tonight. What up, what up, y'all? My name is Christy, and my husband Grant and I are the newest additions to the staff here at UMIN, and I'm super excited to be co-hosting with you guys tonight. Yes, we are so excited. Um, we also, <laughs> um... Chrissy put this in our notes, and I thought it was really funny. She named us Juju and Kiki. Apparently, people call Christy Kiki, so there you go. Uh, and I, of course, Juju on that beat, and I don't miss it ever. <laughs> um, again, if you are just coming in, go ahead and put on speaker mode just at the top right of your screen. If you have more than one person joining tonight from your screen, please rename yourself and the number of people you have in the parentheses after your name. Uh, if you have just stayed with your core group to meet together. Please put your core group leader's name. Yes, thank you for putting that slide up. It has the instructions. Um, yeah, if you want to meet with your core group, please put your core group leader's full name in the parentheses after your name. Um, I just want to take a second to recognize that there are a lot of people in this room who have been on a screen all freaking day. If that's you, Yes. yes, I, yes. I feel that. Um, and I want to invite you to shake it up for the next hour and a half. If you need to, lay on the floor or move from your desk to your couch or your bed. And I've even heard some people um, lighting candles or turning down the lights during the worship set just to get into this posture of worship that is different from the posture that they've been in uh, most of the day for class, for work, whatever you can online. Um, and if you have any other things, go ahead. Um, any other ways that you set your posture up um, for worship, go ahead and put that in the chat. Yes, you guys. And our mission here at the Inn as a community is to walk together as we discover real life in Jesus. And right now, real life in Jesus is happening in quarantine. And we just want to take a minute to acknowledge that meeting together and worshiping virtually isn't exactly the ideal way that we are be hearing right now. Um, and yes, it can be a little bit awkward to try and engage and connect through screens, 
but we're all in this together and it is so important that we are choosing to show up for each other and choosing to do this season of life together and walk it out. So it's super important. And I very quickly want to give you guys a rundown of what we got going on tonight. So we're going to have a chance to hear from one of our students. Yes. And Mike is going to be bringing a message tonight and we're going to share a time of worship through music. And then that is going to be followed by a time of connection and small groups, which we're super excited for. And I encourage you guys to lean into that small group time because it is a great way for us to meet new people who are joining our community, to lean into conversation and to really connect with new people and then go deeper with our friends. So again, it matters for us to show up for each other and this is a great space for us to do that. Yeah, and we know that life looks super different right now and we wanna do our best to keep you guys updated and connected to one another. And so we wanna let you know about some of the opportunities we have this week. Yes, so one of those opportunities is something that we are launching this week called Better Than Class Wednesday. Shout out, it is going to be awesome. So on Wednesdays, we are gonna have a student-led activity where they're gonna lead us through something that is by far gonna be better than class and it's gonna be hype, so make sure you join. This Wednesday, we have our own AJ Shram and Kelsey Queen leading us in how to do TikTok dances from 3 to 4 p.m., which I really need, so I'm super excited to be there. <laughs> yes, and we also have worship auditions. So if you play the drums or the electric guitar or the trumpet or the bassoon or the bass or are a male vocalist, we want to encourage you to sign up. There is this, um, this beautiful graphic here. Uh, you can sign up on the inseattle.org slash worship team. And if you have any questions, go ahead and contact Joyce or Hannah. Um, they would love to talk to you about this great opportunity for next year. And you guys, we have a ton of stuff going on this week. So make sure that you get connected to social media and that you check out our Zoom account so you know what's going down. Yes, yes. Thank you so much for being with us. We now have an, offer, an awesome opportunity to hear from one of you. AJ Shram is a student at UW, finishing up his senior year online, like some of you guys. And he's a leader at the Inn. And he's been part of this community longer <laughs> by far longer than I have. Um, AJ, we are so excited to hear from you. Cool. Well, thanks, thanks Janelle, for, uh, for that intro. Uh, for those who don't know me, my name is AJ Schramm. Uh, like they said, I'm a senior at the University of Washington this year, and I'll be graduating in June. Well, virtually graduating anyway, but um, I'm currently quarantined in Woodinville, Washington with my parents, living in the lighthouse this year, and uh, moved over with them um, when this whole quarantine started. So I'm going to be sharing a little bit about uh, kind of my COVID-19 experiences and how it's affected my life. Um, so initially it wasn't super difficult when nothing was really affected, like before there was a stay-at-home order. But for me, when the stay-at-home order it and then classes were moved all virtual, honestly, I got really angry um, and it made me really disappointed I had set up like a lit senior spring quarter. I only had eight credits. Four of them were tied to like a really cool internship that I had. Um, and I was really excited about that. And it was, it's baseball season. So I just had a lot of cool stuff. And then when all this happened, um, it kind of just shut down and it made me really sad, sad and angry. And like, I knew I wasn't going to be able to see my friends. Um, I coached like a select baseball team of eighth and ninth graders, and we weren't going to be able to play with uh, play any games, and then my internship had to be had to be changed to one I wasn't as interested in, um, and I just like sulked in that and was super angry and just kind of laid on my bed and like was mad, and that's not very healthy. Um, and I realized that, but I had the chance to reflect on that and talk talk to some to some important people in my life. Talk to Third, Alan, Trevor, Leandra, Kelsey, and um, they were able to just kind of push me and say, look dude, you need to like make a change. Like it's good that you realize it, but if you want to actually like get better, you need to make a change. So I was like faced with this choice. 
I could either like continue to live in this unhealthy behavior or I could try to continue in the growth that I had uh, from winter quarter and, and continue on with that. And granted, there's still times right now where I feel sad and angry, but um, I tried to, for the most part, continue in the growth uh, from winter quarter. And um, I had the opportunity to do a activity in one of my classes early in this quarter virtually uh, where we looked at values personally and how they affected our lives. And my top two values ended up being impact and balance. And I realized that during quarantine, I hadn't really had either of those. I wasn't really making an impact um, and I didn't really have a balance. So I started trying to identify some ways I could do that. And one of those was through uh, family relationships, uh, just building and spending a lot of time with them. Um, another was with my baseball team, even though we couldn't meet in person, I started uh, setting up one-on-one -on -one check ins with them where I'd be able to talk to them about life. Um, we could, we talk about baseball a little bit and how to prepare and then also just go through and pray with them. Um, that was another way to make an impact. Uh, started learning um, how to be more healthy in my relationship um, and then started driving for DoorDash. Uh, shout out DoorDash, love it. Um, uh, be able to like with a mask and gloves six feet away, be able to deliver uh, some some really good restaurant food to people too. And then my own quarter goal. So it was a, an opportunity for me to involve impact and balance into that growth. And then today um, I had the chance uh, to do my devotion and I was reading Haggai and Haggai 1.9 says this, um, the Lord's talking here and he says, you expected much, but see, it turned out to be little. What you brought home, I blew away. Why, declares the Lord Almighty? Because of my house, which remains a ruin, while each of you is busy with your own house. And this reminded me today that while our problems and like the issue that we're dealing with right now is important, we have to remember that we always need to be building God's house too, even in times like this and growing our relationship with him. Because the reality is we don't know how long uh, COVID-19 is gonna last and these, this quarantine and the stay at home orders, we have no idea. So what's helped me get through it and maybe it'll be an encouragement to you is instead of having the mentality of getting through this time, instead have fun and embrace and try to grow uh, in this time instead. And that's kind of my encouragement to you and something that I try uh, to, to, to use in my life. Um, and speaking of having fun, uh, like was mentioned earlier, I love having fun by dancing um, and so does Kelsey Queen. So come through tomorrow for the Zoom at three uh, to get your TikTok on. We'll, we'll teach some TikTok dances and it'll be a blast. So uh, uh, come through tomorrow for that. Um, but before we get going on the rest of the night, I'm gonna pray for us. Um, as we go into our time of worship. So bow your heads with me and uh, we'll, we'll talk to God real quick. Uh, dear Lord, I just want to say thank you. Uh, thank you for the platforms to be able to um, come together and meet, even if it's not quite the same. Um, I pray that you will, and just want to thank you uh, for the different um, devices that we can use and, and people that we can be, be with right now. Um, I pray for those that are struggling in this time. I pray uh, for the materials, and I pray that those will be able to get to the people in need quickly. Um, I pray for uh, the different problems that there are, and I pray for those who are good at coming up with solutions. I pray that you will allow those people to have good thoughts and be able to think through um, what's right for next. Um, I also pray that you will help us to really emphasize right now on um, having fun and growing in this time. Um, and as we prepare for worship, I pray that you will help our hearts be right. And I pray that you will just give us the opportunity to learn and glorify you um, the rest of today at the end. Um, in Jesus' name, amen. Hello, everybody. Um, my name is Micah. Um, and yeah, um, I'm going to help out lead some worship tonight. Um, and I just really want, uh, I just want to pray real quick before we, uh, jump into that. So God, thank you so much for, uh, being here with us tonight. God, thank you for, um, just each person that's here tonight. God, I pray that you just bless them. God, remind them of how much you love them. Father God, um, thank you God for your faithfulness in each of our lives. 
Um, would you just help us grow closer to you tonight? Um, in Jesus' name, amen. So the first song we're going to sing is Who You Say I Am. And the second one is No Longer Slaves. And I, I, I chose these two songs um, just to kind of emphasize. And it was really, these two songs are really good reminders, at least for me. Uh, I get I get distracted by a lot of things. And um, I think coming back to like who God says I am is such an important um, just piece of like our relationship with God. Um, and it's so easy to forget. Um, and so, yeah, I just hope these two songs are encouraging to you guys as we um, kind of encourage one another to just learn how to believe um, everything that God says we are um, as children of God. Um, and as beloved by him. And so, yeah. Who am I that the highest king will welcome? I was lost, but he brought me
quick i just wanted to um i was looking up these verses that kind of correlated with these two songs that we just sang and um yeah so john 8 3 6 says if the sun sets you free you will be free indeed and romans 8 31 says if god is for us who can be against us hebrews 13 5 says never will i leave you never will i forsake you and second timothy said once one to seven says for god has not given us a spirit of fear but of power and love in a sound mind. Um, hope that encourages you all tonight. Okay. Hi, guys. Um, I'm Taylor. Um, I'm going to be giving you guys some scripture from Texas for a little bit, and then we're going to um, pray. So Ephesians 4, 1 through 3. Therefore I, a prisoner for serving the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of your calling, for you have been called by God. Always be humble and gentle. Be patient with each other, making allowance for each other's faults because of your love. 
Make every effort to keep yourselves united in the spirit, binding yourselves together with peace. So you guys will bow your heads and uh, pray with me for a little bit. God, we thank you so much just for listening to us during this time and your presence um, in all these spaces. Um, God, I, I just thank you that we're just able to gather still, even during this quarantine. God, I ask that you just step into the homes that maybe quarantine is not the best thing right now. God, I ask you to just fuel the army that is fighting this virus right now, Lord. God, I ask you to just remind us of who you are and what you can do for us, Lord. God, I pray that you call us into those, um, call us into those tough spots to step out and, you know, voice you, God, and be that light for others, God. God, I ask that you just fix our heart pressure towards you, Lord. God, I ask that we are, we're aware that it's okay to ride in our disappointment, God. God, I just ask you to just continue to bless us, and I pray for the small groups, and I pray for um, the rest of the session, Lord, and it's in your son's name. Amen. What is up, everyone? Uh, Mike McAvoy here, coming to you from my own home, live from my own home. Hope you guys are having a great night. Thank you for joining us for the end tonight. Uh, if you don't know me, uh, well, you might as well meet my meet my family. Uh, some of them are here. Rach, come around. Rach is working the camera tonight. Wife, Rach, come on, get in the camera for a little bit. Come hang out with me. It's all lonely. It's so lonely in the camera. I'm used to so many great people. And Slater dog, of course. We are fortunate enough to have a dog, which is very nice during uh, this time. Helps a lot. So, anyways, thank you guys for joining us. Oh, Slater's pretty good at that. We could just go with that for a while. <laughs> okay. Uh, now, now I'm off track. Also, good word, AJ. Man, I don't feel like I even need to preach. I feel like we're in a good spot. I've, I'm already kind of filled up and, and motivated for the night. So. Um, I'm excited to be here, uh, excited to continue on our series called Life Intention tonight. So as we get started, okay, I want you to hold them up right away. Let's get started. This is uh, uh, two hands. You got two hands, hold them both up. I need participation, whether that's in the chat or active. It's super helpful for me because I'm missing all of you right now, okay? We got things in one hand, right? Life is not the way that we want it to be right now. There are things that we are missing Okay, that we are mourning, that we are grieving in life. And we, a lot of us know a God that is good and there is hope and life found in him. Okay, we're coming back to these two things tonight. Um, I want to start off with this one, which is the loss for me. And uh, there's a reality in both of these things that I'll be honest, I am... I am struggling with right now a lot of loss feeling um april is like the best sports month of the year you know besides football season i just love this month uh the mariners are starting actually it's probably good that sports are not on because with quarantine i would literally be watching the mariners play and probably lose like every single game i would have watched every final four game i would have watched every round of the masters uh, Husky spring football, all these things gone. So that's what I'm holding here. That really hurts. However, what's not canceled, NFL draft this coming Thursday. How excited am I, you ask? Well, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, I will just be, you know, in front of that TV nonstop. I've been training Rach to get her ready for the draft. It's like the only sports, besides the Michael Jordan documentary on Sunday, uh, that was definitely worth, uh, worth my time. It was some sort of sport. So... Anyways, I'm also holding the excitement. These are the things I'm holding. I'm excited to be with you guys here tonight. And also, just to be honest, let me be real with you guys as we get started. I like coming on here and having a lot of pump up energy and feeling like I can give us a motivational message for the night. Um, the last 36 hours have been really hard for me. Really hard. And nothing personal. I mean, I've been through a lot of personal things in the last year, a lot of loss that has been really hard. And, and so this was not any one particular thing. But yesterday I went to the office, to Palmer House, um, just to pick up a few things out of the office that I needed. And uh, so I was walking up on the office level, uh, just walking by all of the baptism photos 
of so many of our students, a lot who are on this call or this Zoom here. Um, and I just started crying in the office by myself. Nobody was there. Um, just thinking about the, the missing, what's, what's missing in my life and why I love this job so much, why I love this community so much is, is the way that we get to see Jesus show up in the life of, of so many of you. And, and I get to experience him more in my life because I see him in the way that he works in your life. And sometimes that's tangible and we get to see it and sometimes it doesn't. It's not as tangible. And, and this winter, you know, we strategically did a series this winter called The Big Risk, where we were hoping that it would disrupt life a little bit, break down some of the ways that we put our trust in other things and disorient us, you know, with the hope of, of being built back up, trusting Jesus more in our life, um, hoping really to come out of a little period of disorientation and disappointment in the winter to really building back up in the, in the spring and being together and celebrating and the joy that comes off of, of a lot of us being together over spring break trips and, and celebrating the sun and, and being outdoors and, and just uh, my hope and expectation to see God work in specific ways that is, is gone and he is working. He's working in, in different ways right now. And I wanna say that's really cool. It's really encouraging to hear. And it was, it was a sad day. Um, I just went into the prayer room and cried in the office um, because of how sad I am that we don't get to be together, that I don't get proximity with you. I, I love this community and, and that is really about, um, you know, our, our staff and our interns and our students and, and so many of, of you that, that are such a big part of that. So um, it kind of takes me away from the big pump up message now, um, but that's just kind of where I'm at coming in here. I'm gonna try to hold both these things tonight. Um, if you are in a season of, of disappointment, maybe it's more than disappointment. Even before we get into the message, I want to tell you ahead of time, our message is one of action right here tonight. Um, it, it points us in a direction of movement. Um, how does it apply to our life and what we should do about it is a big theme of tonight. Some of us might not be ready for that message. We realize even as our staff um, has, gets to have conversations with a lot of you during the week and even our, in our own lives, we realize that some of us are ready to be moved a little bit, we come here, okay, you know, what does God have for me? I'm excited for that. And some of us come in in a pretty tough place. One of the things that we notice right now is how many of us come in in just a, a place where we are not ourselves. We are acting a lot out of loneliness um, and, and pain. Even I love the word, AJ said anger, is acting out of anger. A lot of us, that's true. You are not alone in that, okay? Um, that's a pretty normal way that a lot of us are acting out of right now. Um, something that we, we talk about a decent amount that we learn in recovery, if you've ever been in any sort of addiction recovery or, or anything, is this term halt, okay, which is a, um, a term that means there are times where we do things that we either relapse into addictive tendencies or do things that are outside of what we want to do that are unhealthy for us um, in these four places. Halt, when we're hungry, angry, lonely, or tired. Okay. And that is when we're hungry, when we just need to eat, when, you know, physically our, our nutrition is off, it throws us off and has us in a place easily getting into to tendencies to do things that we don't want to do. Um, same thing when we're hungry emotionally. Uh, there's, a, there's a real need, there's a lack of, of what is normally filling us up emotionally. Um, angry, a lot of us are, are angry right now at God, at, at others, at just the world. Uh, lonely, that should be self-explanatory. If you are not feeling lonely in some way right now, good for you. You're probably in the minority. So if you do feel lonely and that has brought shame to you, feeling like, hey, I shouldn't feel lonely, that makes me feel weak, you are one of all of us. Um, and tired. I don't know about you, but sometimes I'm just really tired and I don't know why. I'm like, I don't have that much to do in my day. I got plenty of sleep, but I still feel really tired. And when we're in these four places, um, we can, we can find ourselves in a, in a cycle. It starts a cycle of getting into some of these addictive tendencies that we have. And, you know, that could be a lot of things, right? Pornography is, is rampant right now. Um, the use, uh, drug and alcohol addiction, um, more use than normal. It's funny how when, when we go into recession as an economy, uh, alcohol sales go up, way up. Um, but just the numbing that we want uh, during that time, that could be just endless amounts of, of following 
TikTok, uh, Instagram, Netflix, whatever it might be, but um, the addiction that, that feels like it's more than a normal amount. And so if that's you right now and you're just in this place of, hey, you know, I'm, I'm struggling. Sometimes that leads us into a cycle where then those things, we, we have a, there's, there's things in us, there's roots in us um, that are happening. And then the symptoms are all those things. I just said another's. And then those symptoms oftentimes lead us to feel more shameful. And so then we isolate ourselves from others um, because we feel shameful. We feel like, well, I can't tell anybody about this because they'll feel, they'll see me as less and, and I, I want to kind of look good. And so then we disengage more, we isolate, and that makes us this, then we feel more lonely and that the cycle just continues. Um, it's a shame cycle of, of addiction and, um, let me just say this. If you, if you hear nothing else tonight, this is you in this spot. I want you to direct message one of our staff. If you don't know who our staff are, you can, you can do that um, to uh, the, the prayer. Um, the direct prayers on here is, is totally fine. Um, but you gotta, we got to bring that out. Um, what stops that cycle is, is bringing it out to, um, to somebody, talking about it, sharing about it, taking a, taking a step. Um, and so um anyways just know that that's pretty normal right now it's it's much higher and if that's you don't let that lead you into a place of shame that makes you just feel like you're isolated or unworthy you are not unworthy those things are not defining you um step in let, let somebody be a part of your life uh, but don't disengage okay a lot of us are letting that disengage uh, make us disengage and that's really the message that's where i want to take things tonight okay is, is the idea of disengagement and so i want to i want to stay engaged Okay, um, and engage in what God has for us. I think God has something for us here tonight. We're going to open up his scripture a little bit. He's going to work. I'm confident of that. Even in the midst of hard things, he's going to work in, in, our, in our minds, our hearts, our hands. He's going to move us, okay, into action. Um, I'm confident of that. And so uh, join us. Join me, I guess. I guess I'm the only one on here. Kind of lonely over here um, on this side of the screen. As we continue on our series in the book of Ephesians that we're calling Life in Tension, okay? Because we really live, are living in the tension that these two things exist, okay? And then we feel, we feel this tension, okay? We're inviting you into that tension to stay in that, okay? Not run from it and disengage, but to stay in that tension and be stronger because we stay um, in that tension. And so um, tonight, the, the name, the title of tonight's message is called Built Up in Love, we're going to look at what Paul has for us uh, in Ephesians chapter 4. Uh, I'm going to pray for us, and then we're going to dive right in to this text. Lord Jesus, God, thank you so much for, um, God, this word that you have for us. We are not thankful for the disruption in our life, Lord, but we know that even though you don't cause evil things to happen, God, you can bring good from all situations. You are making good of hard situations in our life. And so would we turn our eyes and our ears toward you tonight um, and allow you to work and make things good in our life. Lord, we love you and praise in your name. Amen. All right. Um, we're going to start by rereading uh, verses one through three. I'm going to teach a little bit off of it, and I'm going to preach a little bit for us tonight. Uh, and then we're going to apply that to our life. And then we're going to talk in small groups. And if that's scary to you, Maybe tonight is a great night to join a small group and stick around a little bit because this word, if this word gets in your heart and it, we and we just leave it there and it doesn't apply, if we don't think about how we're going to actually apply this, we're, we're wasting it, okay, tonight. And we get in small groups so that we can talk about how we get to apply this to our life and hear other people that are going through the same thing. So it's a cool uniting community thing. I encourage you to stick around. Give it a shot tonight. All right, here we go. Ready? Uh, verse one. Why don't you throw that up on the screen? I, I don't know if my uh, version's the same. I'll try to read off the screen, which might be weird. Here we go. Paul's talking. He says, as a prisoner for the Lord, then I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. Okay. Chapter four, Paul pivots. Okay. First three chapters, really clear gospel message. Okay. What the good news is of Jesus Christ, what he has done, dying for us. Um, paying the price for our sins is good news. It impacts our life. It should shape our life if we choose to accept that, okay, and allow it to shape our life. Verse four, or chapters four through six of Ephesians talk about then what? Then how do we live that out? And so Paul's going to now tell us how we live out, okay, this gospel in our life. And I love this. I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. 
Okay, this is not the main point of tonight's message, but I gotta say, especially on this word calling, because it's one we get hung up on a little bit. Sometimes it feels a little bit like a Christian word. You hear people be like, oh, I, I am called to this thing, or I was called to be a doctor, or you know, a theologian, or something like that. Um, <clears throat> remember when we hear calling, okay, what Paul's really referring to is when Jesus calls, his calling is to himself. Okay, so, so Jesus says all of his calls, um, are calling people to him, to follow him, to know him, okay, um, to be near him, and then move outward into the world and shape the world, shape the culture of the world, and help other people understand his love in their life. That's the calling. Okay, so if you're someone out there like, what am I called to do? I don't know. I've never felt this call. I've never felt this audible voice of God tell me, Mike, you need to be a pastor. What it is, is I have felt called to Jesus. I have responded to that call. I've moved toward him. I've discovered my identity in him. Then I have figured out who I am in his image. Okay, has then I figured out what kind of skills and gifts and passions that I have. And then I look out at how I can bless the world with those things and I'm moved to do that. That's the calling in our life. Okay, don't be too hung up on, man, I need to have a very specific calling into being a teacher or a professional athlete. You're called to be in the NBA, go do it. Um, okay, so that's really calling. Um, let's keep reading though. We don't, we don't need to stop there. Okay, uh, be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Make every effort to keep the unity of the spirit through the bond of peace. Okay, now this is really good. Keep the unity. I want to repeat what Brooke taught us so well last week, okay? And the theme that is woven throughout this whole book, um, which is that our goal is unity. Okay, our goal is unity. It's not uniformity. It's not for us all to be the same. We don't come into a room or a Zoom call so that we can just all be the same person. We shouldn't look around on social media and think I need to be like everybody else. That's not the goal. Okay, the goal is to discover who you are, that you're uniquely created in God's image, and that then we can be united, okay? We can be united in Jesus, somebody who can unite us like nothing else can do. And that's what really makes us a community. Okay, that's our common threat week to week. We want to be uh, sure on that. Now, where does that lead us to? What does it mean to be united, but not all the same? Okay, we're going to pick up in verse 11 in Ephesians. We're going to skip a few. Uh, it says this. So Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors and teachers to equip his people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up. All right, I want to pause there. If you're like me, okay, you look at a list of things. So we say, okay, so, so Christ has, has, has created us. God has created to be these different things. He's created some of us to be apostles, some of us to be prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers. You may be sitting here like, okay, I don't think of many of those things. They all sound really holy. Or you might be like me, and anytime you read a list, you think, okay, which one, which one am I? Where do I find myself? Well, tonight's message is not about what. You, you are, what kind of gifting you have. That's a good message. In fact, tomorrow morning on our spiritual practices, every morning at 9 a.m., come join us for spiritual practices on our Zoom call. But tomorrow, Kelsey is going to be taking us through, okay, some training on this exact thing, helping us understand kind of our spiritual gifting. Kelsey is our leadership development coordinator here. She does a fantastic job of training on this. So if you're walking away tonight going, actually, I really want to know uh, what it is that I kind of fit under. That's great. We want you to grow. We want you um, to learn more about yourself. And we will do that tomorrow morning more specifically for you. But tonight's message, okay, tonight is not about what. Tonight's message is why. Why has God created us with these unique giftings? And to understand that, we keep reading in verse 12. Okay, he's given us these things for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. So that the body may be built up, the community of people around us, 
may be built up in love. That is the reason that you have been given what you have, to build others up in love. It's not crazy profound. And so I ask you this super applicable question tonight. Are you building others up in love right now? Are you building others up in love? Now, if you've ever been to church, okay, maybe even one time, you've probably heard of this concept of love. Uh, it's not a new thing in the Christian world. Uh, it's not a new thing in the world around us. Most of us want to be around love. And if you go to church, the answer is probably Jesus or love. I'm pretty confident I'm supposed to love God, love other people, love myself. These are, you know, I figured this out the first time I showed up at the inn or, or at church, okay? And I, and I got that. I feel like I'm on the right road with that because if I, I look around and, and if I'm going to be a loving person or if I'm going to be a really hateful person, um, okay, I know what a hateful person looks like. I've seen this in movies, in the news. Some of the people in real life that I know, I don't want to be like that. Uh, I know what, what hatred kind of feels like and, and a person who is hateful feels like, and that's not me. So I think I'm pretty good, Mike. I'm going to start checking out, turn my screen off, scroll Instagram for a little bit while you preach. I understand some people need this message, and I think I've got this one figured out. So if you have tuned out, now is the time for you to tune back in, because this message is not for somebody else. This message is for you. Okay, the kind of love that Paul is talking about here, the kind of love, okay, that we need to build up a community in love that God desires for you is not a love that is opposed by hate. It is a love that is opposed by indifference. Does that make sense? It is a love that is opposed by indifference. The opposite of love is not hate. The opposite of love is apathy, okay, is disengagement. You are not automatically on the right road just because you are not a hateful person. All right, a little too much. I'll back off the camera a little bit. Take a little sip of tea. Ah, real gray. Normal, normal Tuesday night right here. Okay, two weeks ago, they encouraged us, okay? Do not celebrate, or sorry, do not celebrate, sure. Do not settle for cheap reconciliation, okay? Do not settle for false peace or comfortability, but embrace the tension of dying to myself and stepping into real reconciliation with others. This theme continues tonight as Paul doesn't want us, want us to settle for apathetic indifference. That's not good enough, but actually work to build others up in love. Indifference is not good enough. Disengagement is keeping us from being loving people. Okay, what does this look like? I'm going to tell you what it looks like in my life. It is the most normal thing that I struggle with in my marriage. I'm going to be really honest. Um, Rachel and I rarely get in fights because of feeling like the other person hates us. Okay, in fact, probably not once in our marriage have I felt like she hates me or I hate her. But we do have a lot of fights and there are a lot of places and times where both of us feel unloved by the other one, not because the other person is being hateful. Okay, and I'll tell you what it looks like. It sounds like this. I don't feel very loved by you right now. Okay, from both of us. Uh, because I don't feel like you are paying any attention to me. You're giving a lot of attention to your phone. You're giving a lot of attention to the TV, to that sporting event. I could go both ways, but sometimes more geared for me. Uh, you're giving more attention to Slater Dog. Uh, you're giving more attention to other people. What it's communicating to me is that you don't love me. Okay, Jesus was incredibly loving, 
And the way that that love played out is, is the way that he gave people attention. It's all over. It's all over the gospel. Read the gospel. It's constantly what Jesus does. A prostitute comes and washes his feet. And, and, and everyone says, that's an outcast in society. She's not worthy of your attention. And he says, uh, look, you're not, like, you deserve my attention. Okay, Zacchaeus, dude is doing a fantastic job of social distancing himself high up in a tree. And Jesus comes over in the midst of the crowd and and looks up and says, I'm going to eat at your house. Get down. I'm eating at your house tonight, which is actually not that nice of a thing. Now this guy has to like pay for food for him and stuff. But he says, I'm going to show you attention. I'm going to give you attention. The bleeding woman who's walking down the street touches his robe. Okay, stops bleeding. He turns. He looks at her. And it says he listened to her whole story. He gave her his attention. And he does it in a number of different ways. He flips tables. Okay, in the synagogue, because there's corruption going on, and people didn't like him, but he gave them his attention. He called out his disciples when they didn't get it, and he gave them his attention. And then he welcomed them back on a beach bonfire, bringing them back up, giving them his attention. Jesus loved in a lot of different ways. Okay, sometimes people liked it, and sometimes they didn't. Some people wanted to kill him because of his love. In fact, people did kill him because he wouldn't back down. He did not become indifferent about issues and things that mattered and people that mattered. He stayed engaged constantly. Jesus was never indifferent. He didn't numb. He didn't check out. He loved people by giving more energy and attention to them than to his own agenda. You know, in a, in a community like this one, I think there's a lot of opportunities, okay? I, there's a lot of opportunities to, to think about ways that we have a tendency to disengage because it just feels easier. I mean, I just, be honest, I'm giving this message, but you know, even in this quarantine season, when there's a lot of pain and there's a lot of like struggle, there's always the desire to kind of disengage a little bit. Um, I think what's so cool about this community, uh, one that has been on this, on this journey that God has us on, becoming a multicultural, multi-ethnic community, is the continual conversations that we get to be a part of, where there are people that are different than us. That could be ethnically, that could be culturally sexual orientation. There's a, there's a lot of things that, that are different. And, and one of the things I have loved about so many people is, is just coming and being engaged in conversations with, with people. It doesn't mean we have to agree with every single person, but staying engaged. Oh my gosh, that's the hope, right? Not that we would, we would try to just be right all the time or that we would leave if, if we're angry or, or it doesn't make a ton of sense to us. And I know that's a hard tendency for me. I mean, I, I have incredible privilege. I'll say here, I do as a white, straight male. Like, I have a ton of privilege that I get to step in and out of those conversations. I can disengage. And it really doesn't affect my life in, in a big negative way. And to actually learn from people and, and friends around me who go, hey, that's a constant part. Conversations about race and ethnicity are constantly a part of my life. I can't disengage from them. It should motivate us to go, hey, if we're really going to be a, become a community of, of different people who have these, these different values at times and, and different stories and different backgrounds and different experiences, but come together united around a common Jesus, it means we need to come together in some spaces that might feel a little bit uncomfortable and staying engaged in those things not disengaging. Disengaging is always easier. It is always easier to do. I know what some of you guys are thinking, okay, Mike, this sounds good. It sounds very idealistic. I don't really have the capacity to love others well right now. I am struggling just loving myself well. I'm not feeling very loved. I'm unmotivated. I'm apathetic. I lack purpose in my life. Shouldn't I focus more inward and just make sure that I have enough? 
how can I love others? How can I build others up when I don't feel very loved and built up right now? You're right. You're right. This is the hardest time. This is one of the hardest times. Probably it's one of the hardest things um, and the hardest time to do this. And if you're trying to do it on your own right now, if you think that you can just love people like crazy in a season where you don't feel that much love from other people, you're probably not going to be very good at it. It's a lot to ask for yourself. It's why if you're someone here that has chosen to follow Jesus, and if that's not a decision you've made, and you want to, you come talk to me about that. We're, we're glad that you're here. Um, and if, but if you have, if you said, hey, I, you know, I, I, I've chosen Jesus, I, I go to him. This is a fantastic opportunity to understand a different way of how to find strength to love beyond our capacity to do so. And, and so we'll finish with this, our final piece of text tonight. Uh, what will be verses 22 through 24 of, of Ephesians 4. And uh, you have those. We can throw them up all over from the Bible. They'll probably be very similar. Ah, there we go. Thank you, Lord. You're doing a fantastic job out there. You were taught with regard to your former way of life to put off your old self, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires, to be made new in the attitude of your minds and to put on the new self created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. Okay, another way it said this, okay, if we're going to be real followers of Jesus, if we're going to learn to love, if we're going to have a capacity to do things beyond what we, what we can do and we have the strength to do, it takes a daily taking off of our old self and a putting on of our new self. It takes a daily movement toward Jesus. He has a way for us a better way, a way that is filled with life. It's not easier, okay? I'll say this every single week because we always need to hear it. It's not easier. And if you just think it's going to be easier with Jesus, we're going to be disappointed. It's not easy. It's why so many of us in college choose to walk away from Jesus because it's not easier, okay? Because following Jesus means following Jesus to the cross, to die to yourself and your own selfish desires. And like Jesus, consider others more valuable than yourself. That's what makes us a community. That's what makes us a community. That's how we live as family right now. Waking up daily and saying, okay, I'm going to give myself some grace. I did not do this perfectly yesterday. God did not expect me to do it perfectly yesterday. God is not disappointed in me. And today I'm going to take off my old self, my old way of life. I'm going to put on this new way of life. I'm going to move toward Jesus, allow him to work in me and through me and to love others and build them up in a bigger way than I ever imagined I could. He's going to give you strength. He's giving you strength right now to do things that you don't think you have the ability to do because we're not getting that life from all those other things that we used to go to. But he's providing life for us in, in maybe a new way. And I promise you a more powerful way, but it takes a daily dying to ourselves and a daily movement toward him. That is how we live in this tension. Let me pray. Lord Jesus, wish it was easier, God. I just wish it was easier. Be honest, a lot of times I pray for it to be easier. Lord, but I know, I know on this call right now, Lord, you are shaping some of us. The work is internal. We don't see it right now, Lord, but I know you're doing something. So would we see that? Would we, would we know it in our minds? Would we feel it in our hearts? God, would it move us to use our hands, to think of others above ourselves? to serve you and others, even in a time where we just want to think about ourselves, Lord. Oh, God, we love you so much. We pray all this in your name. Amen. Thank you, guys. All right. <clears throat> Hi, guys. My name is Jonathan. Um, I'm going to lead you through a song. Oh, yep. Yeah. I'm going to lead you through a song, Not in a Hurry, and then Kaisa and Anna are going to lead you through a song when I'm done. Um, and really quickly, I want to say about this song, um, it says the phrase not in a hurry a lot. 
uh, or not in hurry. And I found that when I was singing it the other day, I kind of realized that I feel like I'm in a hurry um, sometimes. And it's weird to sing a song, maybe thinking that you're singing lyrics that aren't necessarily true right now. But um, this song is talking about learning and um, it's fine to sing a song knowing that right now maybe um, you feel rushed. Um, so, yeah, I'm just gonna start. <laughs> in my own strength in your eyes Lord I don't want to rush on ahead in my own strength when you're right here I'm not in a hurry when it comes to your spirit when it comes to your presence when it comes to your voice i'm learning to listen just to rest in your nearness i'm starting to notice you are speaking Feel what you feel. I want to see what you see. Lord, I, I want to love like you. I want to feel what you feel. I want to see what you see. I'm not in a hurry when it comes to your spirit, when it comes to your presence. When it comes to your voice, I'm learning to listen just to rest in your nearness. I'm starting to notice you are speaking. I'm not in a hurry when it comes to your spirit, when it comes to your presence, when it comes to your voice. I'm learning to listen, just to rest in your nearness. I'm starting to notice you are speaking. Open my eyes. In my ears, I want to hear you speak. Tell me your thoughts, what's on your mind. I want to be your friend. I want to see through your eyes. I want to see through your eyes. I want to see through your eyes. When it comes to your spirit, when it comes to your presence, when it comes to your voice, I'm learning to listen, just to rest in your nearness. I'm starting to notice you are speaking. I'm not in a hurry. When it comes to your spirit, when it comes to your presence, when it comes to your voice, I'm learning to listen, just to 
rest in the I'm starting to notice you are And I will put my 
inside you open up my eyes in wonder and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me and i will build my life upon your love it is a firm foundation and i will put my trust in you alone and i will not be shaken and i will build my life upon your love it is a firm foundation and i will put my trust in you alone and i will not be shaken holy no one like you there is none beside you open up my eyes in wonder show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me thank you jesus we thank you that your love is our foundation god we thank you for all the truth that was spoken tonight god i pray that those words would stay in our hearts and that they would continue to teach us throughout the week, God. I pray that those who have been feeling discouraged would feel encouraged and those who have been needing comfort would receive comfort, Lord, and that those who have been feeling disengaged would be spurred to hope, God, and that they would be spurred to engage, Lord. Thank you, God. In your name we pray, amen. Amen, amen. Gosh, wow, wow, wow. That message and that worship uh, is just incredible. Thank you guys so much. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, worship team. Uh, we love you guys. Um, you guys, we are getting ready to transition into our time of small groups. And in just a second, you will automatically be placed into a small group. You'll get a five minute warning towards the end to let you know that small groups are about to end. Um, and then after that, you'll automatically be paced, placed back in the main group. So um, before we transition, I just want to pray for us real quick. Uh, Father, thank you um, for the different ways that you've been speaking to our hearts and our minds. As we're learning to listen and draw near in the ways that you're calling us closer, Jesus, teach us to lay down our own agenda um, and to follow you to the people and places that need your peace and your hope um, and your life, the way that you've given that to us and the way that you're offering that to us right now. Um, we know that this movement begins in our hearts. And so, Father, we, we invite you to speak. And we say, speak, we're listening. Um, would you bless this time with small groups? Would it just be rich connection um, and time for us to, to share our hearts with one another? Thank you for the space, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. You guys enjoy your small group.